Hey everyone, I've got another quick Kingdom Hearts 3 theory here and I've wanted to talk about Aqua and the whole Aquanaut twist for a while now. I'm a bit late but I've got some key points and some things I want to discuss with you all. Now I want to discuss the actual event of how it happened, like did Master Xehanort hit her with a piece of his heart? Is she just under the influence of the darkness itself instead of being a vessel? And where was Ansem the Wise during all this? In the blank point cinematic he was last seen hanging out with her at the dark margin but now he's nowhere to be seen from recent trailers. So with that in mind I'm going to discuss the prelude to Aqua falling into darkness first then I'll move on to my theories about why she actually fell into darkness and how it went down and then I'll discuss the implications this has going forward for Kingdom Hearts 3. Let's jump right in. really have. I'm losing this fight. The darkness has found the cracks in my heart. Is this the last apparition before it takes me over? Okay, now about the twist itself, not many of us could have seen it coming. However, there were a few subtle hints in 0.2 Birth by Sleep from Aqua about her losing hope to ever escape the Realm of Darkness. In fact, she even outright gives up and wants to fade into darkness at one point in 0.2, but she is saved by Mickey, with whom she then confides in that the darkness is slowly eating away at her. Then, as Master Xehanort had said in Birth by Sleep, Aqua was the backup in case something had happened to Ventus and Venetus in the forging of the Keyblade. Additionally, as Master Xehanort told Terra, he was one of the many roads that he would have chosen to take. So, I hope this all paints a clearer picture about how we've had minor hints left to us about the Aqua twist over the series. Anyway, chronologically, the last we saw of Aqua before being Norded was the end of Blank Point cinematic from Birth by Sleep, with her gazing off into the sea at the dark margin alongside Ansem the Wise. Here he catches her up to date with the escapades of Sora and the gang and keeps her in hopes in check about the light being still around. Eventually she remembers this Sora was the same one she'd met on Destiny Islands all those years ago when he was a young kid. And Blank Point ends with Aqua looking off into the sea, hopeful that Sora will be able to come rescue her eventually. But unfortunately, as we know, that will not be happening anytime soon. And that's about it for the prelude, now let's explore and theorise why Aqua has fallen into the darkness and how it may have happened. Okay, now the most obvious reason for why Aqua gave into the darkness was that spending all that time within the realm of darkness, over 10 years by now, has obviously weakened her resistance to darkness itself. She even states in 0.2 that the darkness had found a way into the cracks of her heart. So maybe she simply couldn't resist it for any longer and just gave up. This is the most straightforward motive about why Aqua fell, but I believe that it wouldn't have been that simple, as nothing in Kingdom Hearts ever is. Another theory could be that she was forced into becoming a Xehanort vessel. This would mean that Master Xehanort himself appeared at the Dark Margin and infected Aqua with a piece of his heart. I also don't see this as being very likely as Aqua would have become immediately hostile upon seeing Master Xehanort, and unless she was defeated by him and forced into joining the Seekers of Darkness, then I don't see this as being the exact method in which Aqua was naughted. However, my most concrete theory that I have about this is that Aqua was misled into falling into the darkness willingly by someone misusing her connection to Terra and Ventus. And who would have been the bait in order to trick Aqua into joining the Seekers? Because of darkness, you ask? Xemnas. This is because Xemnas is the physical form of an older Terra, just with golden eyes, tan skin, and silvery white hair. And as we know from 0.2, Aqua is desperate for any kind of contact from Terra or Ventus. There is also another hint within the series about Xemnas and Aqua having been in contact, with Xemnas keeping her armor within the Chamber of Repose and the two of them communicating somehow. Therefore, I believe that following the conclusion of Dream Drop Distance, with the Seekers of Darkness still needing one last member as Sora was saved by Lee, that Master Xehanort would have dispatched Xemnas to the Dark Margin in order to use his appearance as Terra to trick Aqua into joining him. This explains Aqua's motivation as to why she joined the Seekers of Darkness. She did not want to wait any longer before joining whom she believed to be Terra. It should also be noted, however, that Anson the Wise may still have memories of Xemnas and the organization, which could result in him trying to stop Aqua from embracing the darkness. However, he has amnesia, and as I said earlier, he is nowhere to be seen within recent trailers after Aqua has been naughted. So whatever happens to Anson the Wise is also currently a mystery. Now with regards to what this means to Kingdom Hearts 3, without Aqua amongst the Guardians of Light, this makes it incredibly more difficult for Terra and Ventus to be saved. Currently Aqua is the only character we know about with the current knowledge and means to unlock Castle Oblivion and find Ben's sleeping body. Also, without Aqua's help, rescuing Terra seems like another challenge to the Guardians of Light. But given how little we know of Terra's current whereabouts, we cannot really estimate how difficult this task will be just yet. Furthermore, Aqua was arguably the strongest current Keyblade Master from the Guardians of Light, and now with her among Xehanort's rank, this means that his side is currently much more powerful than the Guardians of Light initially. It should also be noted as well that if Aqua did willingly give herself to the darkness, she may be one of the trickier members to return to the side of the light. Terra has shown himself to be actively resisting Xehanort's influence after numerous years, and while we haven't seen enough from Aqua to comment on this, it should still be noted. And finally, we need to point out that 
Of all the protagonists within Kingdom Hearts, Aqua is easily one of the most characters associated with light. And if Zayn or Dit outright turn her into a vessel by force, then we need to be worried about how powerful he is and how easily he could turn other guardians into seekers of darkness. In conclusion, I've done a lot of rambling here. But I hope that you guys can understand the messages which I've been trying to get across. Aqua was more than likely tricked into falling into the darkness completely, or she willingly gave herself to the darkness, in hopes of being reunited with her friends. I'm still split 50-50 on whether or not she was part of Zayn or heart, or if it was somehow under the influence of darkness. Anyway, I'll hopefully do another video about how we will save Aqua in Kingdom Hearts 3, but until then, thanks for listening.